If you're a designer looking to take the next step with your designs, making them into real, beautiful and functional websites, you might be asking yourself, what tool should I pick? And traditionally, the answer to that question would be pretty simple, Webflow. Nowadays though, not that simple. And in this video, I will present the four main reasons designers are making the transition over to Framer and why this incredible tool is being touted as the future of web design. But before we start, I just want to highlight that Framer is not paying me to do this. These are unbiased observations made by myself and other designers in the community. The first reason, the learning curve. While Webflow has been the standard among designers who do web design for many years, it's always had one big issue, a rather steep learning curve. To be truly efficient in Webflow, you have to really understand the fundamentals of web development, including things like proper HTML structure and CSS. <laughs> Not gonna think about that. Now with Framer, all it takes for you to get started is some previous experience with a design tool like Sketch or Figma and you're good to go. After a couple of hours inside of Framer, it will feel like you're in one of those tools you're so used to. But the main difference being that you now have the superpower of actually publishing your designs, making them into a real website in one click. The second reason, who the tool was designed for. In Webflow, you have the ability to do anything, but with the ability to do anything, you end up adding complexity. And I honestly always felt that Webflow wasn't really made with a designer's workflow in mind. This of course impacts the user experience for you as a designer, making it harder to achieve your creative vision quickly and easily. In Framer, on the other hand, Things like scroll interactions, parallax effects, hover effects, drag and drop functionality, you name it, everything is literally at your fingertips, built in as native features in the tool. Making web design a game of creativity instead of technical ability. The third reason, the power of community. While Webflow has a great forum where people gladly help out with all kinds of questions. We can't deny the fact that there's just a difference between an online forum with nice people and a passionate community. And I'm willing to argue that one of Framer's biggest strengths is the community of passionate people who truly love the tool. You'll be able to step into the Discord server, ask your question and get multiple solutions to your problem in no time. You can imagine what a relief this is if you're on a tight deadline and need to get something fixed quickly. And by the way, this is not just for individuals. The Framer team has even helped companies get set up in the tool, free of charge, with a recent example being Dribbble and their migration to Framer. Pro tip, even if you don't have any issues, I would suggest you head into the community to get inspired by all the cool stuff people are designing. It really is a magical place for creatives. The fourth and last reason is product evolution. Webflow is definitely not known to ship slowly, but they're also not known to ship super fast. And who can blame them? They're a huge corporation now, which naturally makes them less agile. So I feel it's kind of unfair to compare them to Framer in this aspect, because not only is Framer a much smaller company and therefore they've got that inherent edge, even compared to small companies, the speed at which Framer ships new features is unreal. Don't believe me? Last month they shipped seven updates, seven big updates. It's crazy. And the best part, they listen to the community when prioritizing what to ship. They build the tool for you and with you. Now, if Framer does sound like the web design tool for you, then I suggest you check out this playlist that I update constantly with Framer tutorials. Now, until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.